Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have the first part of a two-part tale about, well, it's right there in the title this time, a cathedral builder. But this is a story of a very particular cathedral builder and a very particular wager with a very dangerous person. This is the Cathedral Builder of Cologne. It was at Cologne in the year of 1248, on the eve of the Ascension Day of Our Lord, before the mighty Archbishop Conrad of Hochstetten stood a simple architect, offering the plan of a church and arrogantly boasting that it would become one of the most beautiful cathedrals in Christendom. That man was Master Gerhard of Ryle. The archbishop was greatly astonished at the grandeur of the design and ordered the execution of the bold plan without delay. On the square which was selected for the erection of the new cathedral, another church had once been standing under the reign of the first king of the Franks, but it had been destroyed by the Normans. Now again, Gigantic masonry, slender pillars, bold vaults and arches rose to unite into a proud dome. Everybody admired the humble man whose creative genius now employed thousands of industrious workmen, and Master Gerhard's name was mentioned with great praise at home and abroad. When the choir was finished, crowds of pious pilgrims came from the surrounding suburbs and even from a distance to pray before the relics of the three holy kings which were enshrined there. Hymns of praise re-echoed through the unfinished aisles. Everybody rejoiced. But he who ought to have been the most glad was sad, and dark forebodings damped his spirits. The question if after all he would live to see his proud building finished, or if cruel fate would tear him away before he could have tasted the sweetness of triumph, tormented him day and night. His young wife saw with grief the change in his disposition, but she tried in vain by tender words and caresses to smooth his sorrowful brow. The more he was troubled by his gloomy thoughts, the more he urged his workmen on. Four years had elapsed. It was now 1252. The tower on the north side rose already proudly into the air. The scaffolding reached higher and higher every day. One day, Master Gerhard stood before the big crane, watching how the gigantic blocks of stone taken from the quarries at the Drachenfels were lifted up. He thought with pride and satisfaction that this work was going on well, and that he surely would see it finished. While thus meditating, he did not observe that a stranger stood by his side, watching him with an ugly sneer. A burning red cloak hung round his tall figure, a gold chain glittered on his breast, and a cock's feather nodded from a quaint velvet cap. He introduced himself to the somewhat surprised builder as a fellow architect. You are building a lovely church, he said then but I created a far more magnificent mansion long, long years ago. Its stone will never crumble to dust, and it will resist the influence of time and weather forever. In saying this, his eyes glittered strangely under his shaggy brows. This presumptuous speech did not please Master Gerhard, and without answering he measured the bold speaker scornfully from head to foot. Your church, continued the stranger, will be a very lovely building, but don't you think that such an enterprise is far too audacious for mortal man? You, Master Gerhard, you ought to have known at the time when you laid the foundation stone of your church that you would never see its work finished. And who is likely to prevent it? Angrily burst forth the builder. No one had ever dared to use such language towards him, nor to wound his pride so keenly. Death, coolly replied the stranger. Never! cried Master Gerhard in a great fury. I will finish what I began, and would even bet with the devil himself to do so. Hello, laughed the stranger grimly. I should like to deal with such an audacious man as you, and make bold to bet with you that I will, in a shorter space of time, finish the digging of a canal from Treves to Cologne, fill it with water, and have merry ducks swimming on it, 
than you will take to complete your church. So be it, said Master Gerhard, very much startled, taking the outstretched hand of the strange man. At the touch of his cold fingers a sensation of horror crept into the heart of Master Gerhard. But the red-cloaked man burst into a yelling laugh and cried out in a formidable voice, Remember we betted for your soul. Utmost terror seized the trembling architect. Cold perspiration stood on his brow, and he tried in vain to utter a word. Suddenly a storm rose. The stranger unfolded his red cloak and was lifted from the ground in a cloud of dust and vanished. From that day the mind of Master Gerhard grew more and more gloomy. He kept on wandering restlessly on the scaffoldings of the building. The more he considered the huge dimensions of the cathedral, the more doubtful he felt as to whether he would be able to finish it or not. By daybreak he could be seen among his workmen, and till late in the evening he wandered about on the building ground, praising the industrious and blaming the idle. He looked out anxiously sometimes in the direction of Treves to see if he could discern anything uncommon there but he never saw the slightest change, nor any sign that the stranger with whom he had bedded had really begun his canal in earnest, and he looked more hopefully into the future. One day he was standing, as usual, on the top of one of the completed towers when he felt a hand laid on his shoulder. Turning round, he beheld with disagreeable surprise the ghostly stranger. Was he a master of the black art, or was he the devil himself? Well, Master Gerhard, began the unwelcome visitor, how are you getting on with your work? I see it is making good progress. Happily, I shall soon have finished my canal, else I should run the risk of losing my bet. I can scarcely believe your boasting speech, answered the builder scornfully, because I do not perceive the slightest trace of your having begun the canal. Know, my dear man, that I am more than a hundred workmen together, and, as I told you, my work is nearly ready, said the man in red. Really, said Master Gerhard, a little startled, I should like to know what magic power could enable you to do so. Come and follow me, replied the stranger, taking the builder by the hand. Off they flew through the air with the quickness of lightning, and reached the earth in the district near Treves in a few seconds. At the place where they descended, a spring arose from the ground, and it sent its crystal waters into an opening in the rock. Come with me, said the magic stranger, and bending down, he disappeared in this opening. Master Gerhard followed him, and came to a high glittering grotto, where he perceived that the water gushed tumultuously into the mouth of a black, underground channel. You see, said the stranger, you see how well I've used my time. If you have the heart for it, we will follow the waters and see how far my canal reaches already. Scarcely had he uttered these words than a mysterious power seized both and pushed them forward with tremendous rapidity. Master Gerhard saw now with terror that the work of the evil one was indeed not far from its completion for when they emerged from the dark canal, they had the city of Cologne lying close before them. The cathedral builder could no longer doubt the great skill of his rival, and he felt sure that he would lose his bet. The red-cloaked man seemed to take great delight in the builder's discomfiture, and he said with an ugly grin, Well, Master Gerhard, I see you have found more than you expected. I am sure you would like to see the merry ducks which shall swim on my brook according to our bet. He clapped his hands three times and then listened. Some minutes passed, but no ducks appeared. The stranger's face assumed an expression of rage when he found his summons unsuccessful. He tried again, but in vain. After this he gave a frightful yell and vanished all at once, leaving nothing behind him but a smell of sulfur. The cathedral builder had looked on in wonder, and new hope began to fill his heart, that after all he could win the bets. I know well why the ducks won't appear, thought he, but I shall never betray my secret to him. And that is the first part of the cathedral builder of Cologne. 
a story of Master Gerhard of Ryle, and a bet that he made, and yes, it is with the devil himself. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>